Okay, we are good to go. I'll jump back into the presentation and we can get started. Thanks again to everyone who has joined us today um, and welcome to our latest Creditor Watch webinar, How to Conduct Director Due Diligence. Um, as usual, you're stuck with me again, Patrick Coughlin, I'm the CEO at Creditor Watch. Feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn if you um, haven't done so already. Today's presentation, so we're going to run, you know, I usually try to keep it to about 30 minutes. We've started about five minutes later than I usually do, but plenty of people still joining us, which is always nice. Um, slides will be provided as well as a webinar recording, which I'm recording at the moment, uh, usually within 24 hours. If you've got any questions along the way, please don't hesitate to ask. There's a, um, a questions box within your GoToWebinar control panel, which will um, allow you to ask questions. Where possible, we'll get back to you um, with answers. If it's a little bit more technical, if we're inundated with questions, um, then we'll get back to you within sort of 24 hours anyway. So don't stress if we can't get to you. Today's agenda, I'll touch on Creditor Watch a little bit. And we're going to look at ultimately how can we do a little bit more due diligence on directors, um, potentially even shareholders if you want, uh, but more so looking at directors, um, looking at cross directorships, um, bankruptcies, failures, AFSA data, that sort of thing. Um, early warning signs we'll discuss as we're doing a bit of a live demonstration of the two main products that will support um, this director due diligence being adverse cross directorship alerts and bankruptcy plus. Um, that does say poll questions will appear throughout this session. However, I did pull them out at the last minute. So who are we? We're Creditor Watch, Australia's leading commercial credit reporting bureau with over 50,000 customers from small businesses all the way up to um, large banking um, ASX listed organisations as well. We provide end-to-end -end credit management products, everything from online credit applications so you can onboard new customers online rather than using a paper-based application form. Um, all of your credit reporting requirements when you're onboarding and assessing new customers, monitoring and alerts. Um, that Data Logic Plus will analyze your portfolio, help you prioritize collections, for example, um, identify who's using you as a bank and paying everyone on time or vice versa. Um, and of course, our latest product, PPSR Logic. Um, so if you've got any PPSR registrations to create, manage, discharge, amend, bulk upload, um, please do speak to us or PPSR Paul at Creditor Watch um, and we can sort that out for you. So a bit of an objective here of Creditor Watch and then I've you know blended it with today's subject around you know individuals and director due diligence. So you know at Creditor Watch our goal is to make it as easy as possible to identify credit credit risk and minimize bad debt. We want to do that as fast as possible for you. You know Creditor Watch has always come at that um, problem as a technology company first and foremost. We wanna make it easy for you to find what you need and quickly. Now, assessing the individuals behind a business forms a big part of this um, assessment as well. So what we've done, uh, a clever clever way our marketing team have looked at this, Jody and marketing, is imagine you're joining a board, okay? So rather than um, you know, just assessing a, a customer or a new customer as you would do in a day-to-day -day basis. Imagine you're joining a board. It's a really good way to start to consider um, how you would look at the company um, given, you know, you have a little bit more skin in the game now that you are jumping on board with them. So regulatory risk to where you may be liable should the company breach the law. Okay, we've seen that quite a bit lately with the Royal Commission, a number of directors are up for um, significant fines and potentially jail terms as well. Financial insolvency risk, where you may be liable for an organisation's debts, um, particularly in the case of director or personal guarantees that you may sign along the way, or potentially fines as well. Board performance risk, um, you know, ultimately you want to be getting along with the rest of the board. A good functioning board means they're working in harmony. Um, I'm sorry, I've cut that last little bit off. And also, if you're working in harmony, working well together, traditionally the business will perform or the company will perform um, at a much better um, level than if there's infighting. And then, of course, reputational risk. Um, so as a director, 
um, company's performance is a reflection on you. Um, so if the company's not doing well, um, you can be seen to be part of that problem. Um, you want to ensure that the company is performing as well as possible so that you maintain a good reputation in the market and have other opportunities to hopefully be involved in, um, in other companies. So some questions to ask documents to review. All right, there's a lot here. Um, and obviously, you have to you have to assess and and, and take all of this on board with um, with the with the with the idea in mind that you know if it's a if it's a ten thousand dollar or less credit limit, for example, there's probably less of a risk to you and the business. Therefore, you don't need to do this sort of due diligence. However, at the opposite end of the spectrum, if we're talking, you know tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars, well then obviously that's where you need to be more involved, okay? So we've just, I'm not gonna go through everything we've got here, but we've got some really good questions to ask linked into those four sort of risk areas that I flagged earlier. Is the company, is the organization solvent? That's probably the number one thing to ask. Is it in a financial position that you're comfortable with? Are you com comfortable with the accounting practices of the organization, okay? So that's that last one there is probably a combination of you know, imagine you're a director of the board, but also if you're um, a, a creditor, supplier, and you're providing goods to this organization, um, you're probably only gonna ask number three if it's a significant credit limit or uh, risk that you're taking on. We've got the documents to review there, financial statements obviously being the most important there. Uh, regulatory risk, am I confident that the organization is operating in a way that complies with all relevant legislations? Again, the sort of things you can look at are company credit reports, of course, but also how are they perceived in the media? Um, uh, can I have conversations with stakeholders, um, other board members, advisors, that sort of thing? Uh, board performance risk, does the board work well together? Uh, do they have a good re working relationship? Is there trust there? Okay, good ways, really easy ways to get this, particularly um, for public companies looking at board papers, okay? You can see the minutes within there. Um, you can review PACs, and then of course media again is certainly gonna help in that regard. Reputational risk, um, does this organization match my Personal values, personal brand and aspirations. Again, with your with your board members hat on, joining that board, that's what you need to think about. However, if you're thinking it from a you know creditor debtor point of view, um, you know sometimes there has to be a decision made as to whether um, your company wants to be involved with a company that has a poor reputation in the market. Will that potentially um, reflect on your organisation poorly? if it were to get out or if something negative was to happen um, in the future. All right, so let's look at some statistics that we managed to pull um, specifically around cross-directorships, bankruptcies and failures. So for the months December, Jan, Feb, just gone, we sent a total of two over 200,000 risk alerts. So on a daily basis, we will send a risk alert um, to any of our customers that are monitoring their customers, their debtors, their companies that they're interested in keeping an eye on, we send that single email alert with a, with a summary of the changes that have occurred. So we've sent over 200,000 of those in that three month period. Um, the number of companies with an adverse cross directorship alert, so a number of so risk alerts included an adverse cross directorship alert was 25%, about 25%, which is a huge, huge number. So again, very important. Remember, if you're not, um, if you don't have cross directorship alerts turned on, obviously you're not going to receive that. So if you're sitting there going, well, I never received one, there's probably a reason for that. But the people that did have that turned on, um, one in four of them would include an adverse cross directorship alert. I'm gonna get into exactly what an adverse cross directorship alert is in a second. Number of companies, in that period with an adverse cross director, over 4,000 a month we were seeing being added into the Bureau. So the, the above numbers here really are designed to, to be high level and indicate the importance um, of the alerts, but also demonstrate the regularity that these alerts are being sent out. Okay, very important there. Let's take a look at personal insolvencies. 
So now that we've looked at um, cross-directorship risk, let's look at the data for personal insolvencies. Now, this data is coming direct from AFSA. Creditor Watch obviously has um, acquired the back book or, or, or the historical AFSA bankruptcy information, and we have a feed of new bankruptcy information coming through as well. So what we're seeing is AFSA personal insolvencies calculated 31,859 in the year end uh, 2018, so financial year. Um, so that's over 2,600 people per month. This is the highest number of personal insolvencies um, on record since so that the 2009-2010, which was really post-GFC. That's, that's always regarded as the, the worst um, period for personal insolvencies um, as, the, as the, the waves of the, uh, the GFC sort of hit individuals from a point of view that, you know, companies, businesses were, were, were becoming, you know, um, insolvent, going into administration, being wound up, et cetera. Um, and then the flow on effect was obviously felt by the individuals, particularly those with, you know, personal guarantees against their name for properties and, and loans and whatnot. So what we are seeing is um, last financial year was the highest on record since the GFC. So certainly need to be more and more aware of the effect that, um, you know, individuals can have on a business. Now, often a, an individual can become personally insolvent as a result of a, of a company collapse or a business collapse, certainly one of the, um, one of the causes. However, We've also seen that it happens the other way around as well in that um, an individual can become personally insolvent and as a result that can have a serious knock-on effect to any business or company they are involved in. Um, as a bankrupt, you are legally not um, allowed to be a director um, of a company. However, the AFSA and ASIC uh, databases don't always communicate um, comprehensively or, or, or perfectly, I should say. So it can um, it can be that some bankrupt individuals still remain as directors of companies until ASIC and APSA sort of match up um, the data that they have on file. Let's look at some statistics around adverse information. So specifically looking at risk alerts on um, certain industries. So our top five industries with the highest number of risk alerts this year. Retail trade, um, probably no uh, surprise there at all. They're doing it tough at the moment. Um, personal, scientific and technical, uh, sorry, professional, scientific and technical services, construction, wholesale trade and manufacturing. You know, they're probably the, um, the usual suspects that we see in, you know, the small business risk review that we perform on a quarterly basis, but also, you know, most, um, most economic outlooks and um, and uh, you know quarterly reviews around struggling industries. These are generally the top five that you would see. Keeping in mind that risk alerts um, involve court actions, payment defaults, mercantile inquiries, insolvency notices, um, and 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 generally um, most people are on the highest level. That'll also include um, director changes as well because that is certainly. Um, a very important alert to be receiving if you're doing business with a company and their director leaves, uh, particularly, you know, the majority of companies out there are small businesses. Um, there's generally only one, maybe two directors. You should be up to date on that. You certainly want to know that a director has gone. So what's next? Best practices and creditor watch tools to protect your business. With this in mind, let's have a look. Um, at a bit of a live demonstration. And just before I do that, um, a little infographic here as to an adverse cross-directorship. So for those of you wondering what is an adverse cross-directorship and the alerts that um, come with them, this is how it works. So Carol here monitors her customer, Electric Industries Proprietary Limited, of which John Smith is a director. Okay, so Carol is doing business, her company is doing business with Electric Industries. Carol, though, has adverse cross-directorship alerts turned on. So as a result, she will receive cross-directorship alerts on the other two companies that John Smith is also a director of, and those two are Energy Solutions Proprietary Limited and Simple Power. And Simple Power 
and Energy Solutions have both had a number of adverse events um, registered against their credit reports, against their companies. Um, so Carol, with this adverse cross-directorship alerts turned on within Creditor Watch, receives alerts on that. So why is this important? Why is it good? Imagine Electric Industries is a perfect has a perfect credit file. Um, you know, um, they pay their bills. Um, no adverse information, been trading for a long time. For all intents and purposes, they look like the ideal customer that you want to have. However, John Smith also has a number of other companies out there um, in the uh, in the corporate world and they are struggling and, and, and they're not paying their bills. They're being taken to court. They're being wound up. Um, we you, you want to be aware of this because what's most likely to happen is that the, the, the empire around electric industry starts to crumble. It's going to put more pressure on John Smith and electric industries itself um, and has the potential to bring down electric industry. So it's really important to understand the other companies that uh, the director that you're dealing with may be a director of and to keep an under, keep it up to date with how they are performing within um, within the market as well. Are they paying their bills and and um, you know, keeping their noses clean, or are they also struggling, or are they are they being used for um, you know phoenix-like activity? They run those businesses down, transfer the assets across to a similar named organisation or company. Um, that's also another great way that adverse cross directorship alerts plays its part. So jumping into Creditor Watch, we're going to have a look at how to identify um, cross-directorships. Again, we'll flag cross-directorships to you in our credit reports. That's part of your credit watch subscription. It's the alerts that come through, which is that um, additional product um, that you can obviously opt in to receive. So we can see here 611 Proprietary Limited. If we click on the important cross-directorships, we can actually see that um, Rosalba Zumbo has a number of other um, adverse cross directorships against other companies. Again, similar names here. We have that 611 Proprietary Limited and these companies. This company, Mel 611, has two court actions, four insolvency notices, and 11 critical ASIC documents lodged against them. If we jump into another one here, GE Grid Australia Proprietary Limited, um, seemingly pretty good. One little default, obviously, that um, they've had lodged against them um, almost five years ago now. Not something that you'd be too worried about. However, then you get to the cross-directorship section. We click on that and we can see that this director has a huge number of adverse events against his other companies. Okay, really important to see that. Jumping into the next one, Guma Proprietary Limited. Again, this company's got a number of adverse events plus cross-directorships as well. So really easy to identify. We try to make everything quick and easy to find within Creditor Watch so you can make that fast decision. If we then look at what does it look like from a bankruptcy point of view, how do we identify um, existing or previous bankruptcies against the directors or in this case, sole traders that we're dealing with. Looking at this sole trader, scrolling down, we can see high risk credit score, one default, but also a possible bankruptcy found as well. So um, this is, an, this is a, a sole trader, an unincorporated entity. Um, rather than performing a search on um, him as a consumer, um, it's really important to do the search on, on him as a, as, a, as a business, as a commercial entity as well. So we can see that. Um, a bankruptcy has been flagged via Bankruptcy Plus. Um, we can see that it was a debtor's petition um, and the summary at the moment, the individual is an undischarged bankrupt. So really important information there. If they were a customer of yours or they were coming to you as a potential customer, this would have been flagged with Bankruptcy Plus turned on within your Creditor Watch account. Another one to look at here, this is a deregistered entity, but again, just to give you a sense of um, uh, the, the history of this particular entity, we can see that they were trading very nicely as a commercial entity up until August last year, and then they went into administration and were subsequently deregistered. By looking at the director, we can actually see that he was a bankrupt 
um, and this was uh, lodged back in um, November 2016. So you would have had over two years um, or close to two years of um, notice that this particular director um, had been a had been a bankrupt. Um, he had put forward a proposal to creditors for consideration under Part 9 of the Bankruptcy Act and creditors have accepted the proposal. So he wasn't um, bankrupt at the time of the collapse of his company. However, dealing with someone with a poor track record is certainly something that you want to be aware of. Um, in this case, he was a director of a company and that company subsequently went into administration and was wound up. Um, and, it's, and, it's, and it's now deregistered. Plenty of people were monitoring this particular entity or doing business with them, um, and it was one that we flagged for those with Bankruptcy Plus turned on to be able to see that that, that individual was, in fact, a previous bankrupt, really important information. A lot of our customers who were dealing with these guys were able to, um, were able to uh, reassess their risk appetite um, and either reduce their credit limit for that particular company or put them on COD altogether. The last one here, just having a look at how we flag it within the ASIC uh, director's section of a credit report. Again, possible bankruptcy found. You can see that this individual is an existing, um, sorry, is no longer um, subject to control. Obligations of the personal insolvency agreement have been discharged. That was in um, February 2018. However, you do want to keep in mind that this person was a bankrupt previously. Um, you certainly want to keep a close eye on them. Do you want to continue to do business with them? So again, it's all about understanding how um, how the people behind uh, the business, the company, um, are acting, faring, or what their history is. Um, adverse cross directorship alerts and Bankruptcy Plus is certainly two key parts of the Creditor Watch product suite to consider um, uh, when dealing with uh, you know, any sort of entity, large or small, with directors and or sole traders and um, uh, partners as well. So I've got some action points here that I've flagged. Obviously, if you are interested in Bankruptcy Plus or Adverse Cross Directorship Alerts, come and uh, speak to us. As always, monitor your entire ledger. Very important you do that. Don't just look after the, don't just keep an eye on those that you know are bad. You're already hyper aware of the fact that, you know, they're probably not paying their bills or you've heard something out in the market. The ones that usually surprise you are the ones that you are not, um, you know, explicitly kept keeping an eye on. Um, if you haven't already investigated or had a look at our ultimate beneficial owner report, um, certainly something that more and more people outside of the finance world are starting to take advantage of. Um, there is legislation for, for most lenders where they have to identify exactly who the uh, ultimate beneficial owner of a company is. Um, now, when I talk about that, I mean um, you can have company ABC and it is 100% owned by company XYZ. So you go and look at company XYZ. Company XYZ could be 100% owned by um, Acme Limited. So you've got to go and look at Acme Proprietary Limited and so on and so forth. This report will do all of the searching for you, regardless of how many um, shareholders, corporate shareholders there are, and um, run the algorithms to come back with the name of the individual or individuals who are the ultimate beneficial owners. The last one I wanted to flag with you as well was to consider running a personal name search for bigger credit limits, okay? So when looking at a company, we can obviously see um, who the director is, okay? Anyone using Creditor Watch knows how to do that, sits in the director section. The only comprehensive way to find out exactly how many other companies uh, Paul Fitzpatrick is um, involved in as a director or shareholder is to run a personal name extract. By running that personal name extract, it will purchase a specific report from ASIC which flags all of the um, all of the other companies that they are involved in as a director or shareholder. Now, when you're dealing with um, credit limits, significant credit limits, or and 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 significant can be very um, 
uh, can vary obviously between companies and people that I'm speaking to now. However, if you're slightly uncomfortable or you feel like you should be doing a bit more due diligence, consider running that personal name search to have a look at all of the other companies. Within that, you'll be able to link through to Creditor Watch reports of those commercial entities. Um, it's a really important way to consider um, the risk that is involved in any sort of um, partnership or deal you're about to get into. Um, if you need more questions on this or the Ultimate Beneficial Owners Report, which I'll show you where that lives, that will live in the shareholder section, single click, and that will run the report. Um, if the shareholder already is an individual, then don't run it. There's no need. You're just going to get returned with the same information. However, if it is a, um, a company, a corporate shareholder, um, whether it's, you know, 100% or you know, X percent, it's always good to know exactly who you're dealing with. Um, click on uh, the purchase button to, to order one of those ultimate beneficial owner reports. Before I get into what's next, um, keep an eye out for plenty of articles coming out in our blog at the moment. Um, we have done articles on bankruptcy and adverse cross directorships in the past. I'll make sure that they end up in the, um, the the, the follow-up email after this webinar that has the slides and the recording. If not, jump on there and you should be able to search for, search for bankruptcy or cross-directorship. Back to the what's next. Um, upcoming webinars that we've got, become a Datalogic Plus Master. Visit uh, that link there, creditorwatch.com.au forward slash webinars. That will have our upcoming ones and also recordings of all our previous ones. Um, today's resources obviously going to be sent out, but if you've got any questions, get in contact with your account manager. Um, call us at the office 1300 501 312 or use those emails there. Um, the other thing to do, we've got a new crew watch video coming out very soon. Um, hopefully, hopefully have that out this week. Um, so keep an eye out for that in your inbox or on social media. Thanks again to everyone for joining. Bang on one o'clock. Um, I hope you've had a great day. I hope you found this useful. As always, we love feedback, so please don't be shy. Please do ask questions, whether it's within the GoToWebinar control panel or within um, uh, within via email, social, pick up the phone and call us. Um, don't be shy. Get in touch. If you didn't like it, if you did like it, we like to hear feedback from both ends of the spectrum. One last thank you. I will see you very soon for our next webinar, Datalogic Master and how to become one. Thanks again, have a great week.